Soon serviced throughout the war as one of the primary anti-aircraft weapons of the Wehrmacht was the 20mm Fluke Abwehr Cannon 30 and 38. The latter weapon, a development of the earlier model, served either in a single barrel or feeling form, that is, four guns brought together and operated as one weapon. These cannons proved most effective in defending targets against flying aircraft at low level, right up to 5,500 feet. With a full 360 degree rapid traverse when emplaced on the ground and 40 degrees when used in its wheel carriage, the weapon's elevation from minus 12 to plus 90 degrees permitted a very rapid tracking of targets. Such was the versatility of this weapon that it was also extensively employed in the ground role, where its high rate of fire of up to 280 rounds per minute on a cyclic setting, in the case of the Flak 30, provided ground troops with a highly effective close support weapon. It was also mounted on one-ton half-tracks and used by the Kriegsmarine in either single-barreled or feeling form. Flak 30 was first introduced into Luftwaffe service in 1935, where it was originally towed by the Krupp Boxer light truck. While this gun served with distinction in the early stage of the war, the Luftwaffe had decided, even before the onset of the conflict, that it needed an improved variant with a much higher rate of fire. So the Flak 38 was raised to a maximum of 480 rounds per minute, although a more practical rate was 220 rounds to save on barrel wear. was basically a redesign of the earlier weapon. It first came into service in early 1940, in time for the Western Campaign, where it saw action alongside the Flak 30, defending the bridges over the River Meuse, being attacked by the Army de l'Air and Royal Air Force. The Flak 30 served alongside the 38 through to the mid-war period, but had all but disappeared by the later phase of the conflict. The Flak 38 saw extensive service right to the end of the war. Flak feeling emerged in late 1940 as a rapid and practical response to the Luftwaffe's need to get more ammunition into the air to raise the probability of affecting the kill of a target. Mounting four Flak 38s on one mount enabled the combined rate of fire from all four barrels to be raised to a maximum of some 1,900 rounds per minute. However, a more practical rate so as to enhance barrel life saw this come down to about 7 to 800 rounds per minute. The flat feeling was employed alongside the larger 37mm and 88mm flat guns in the aerial defence of Germany. By 1944, the Luftwaffe had come to the conclusion that 20mm was too small a calibre to be effective against the aircraft being deployed by the Allies and the Russians. It was this realisation that led Hitler to refuse production of the Flak Panzer IV Mobile Wagen in 1944 as being a waste of a tank chassis for such a purpose because of the perceived inadequacy of the Flak Feeling 38 that was slated to be its primary weapon. The Flak Feeling was an extremely versatile weapon and was also extensively employed in the ground role. When employing armour-piercing ammunition, it could defeat soft skins, armoured cars and thinly armoured light tanks. The flat feeling was also mounted on trucks and on the eight-ton half truck. The Kriegsmarine also extensively employed the weapon on its warships. Luftwaffe practice was frequently to group different calibers of flak weapons when employed on anti-aircraft duties in order to cover different altitudes. In 
United States Army Air Force P-38 Lightnings and P-47 Thunderbolts engaged on ground attack missions are seen here being fired upon by single barrel 20mm cannons, flak veerlings and a number of 37mm flak Abwehr cannon. By this stage of the war, the Luftwaffe was beginning to concentrate on the 37mm as its smallest flak weapon, deeming the 20mm no longer up to the task. Examples of the 37mm flak weapon and its different variants is not at all common in film of this period. The caliber first entered service in 1935 and appeared in a number of different variants by war's end. The original Flak 18 was quickly replaced by the Flak 36 and 37, which was the most common variant used in action. As with the 20mm weapon, the 37mm was used extensively in the ground roll, being equipped with an armour-piercing shell for that purpose.